really got into MF Doom like that. I can't lie. Nah, the the mask and everything, just the whole, just the whole. Yeah, I, the I, I really like the character. Yeah, I, I, dude, everything about Doom was like super strange. Like he made a mm. whole album about like food and shit, you know? And yeah, that's that's that was so. That connected with me as a child because I was just like. I feel you, bro. I'd be hungry too. You know, like, <laughs> like you're you're the only rapper that's rapping about making whole albums about food and shit. Like that's crazy. You ever heard the theory that it's not actually MF Doom performing at the shows? Like it's someone else. It might. It, 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 I honestly <laughs> like, like, could be. I've thought about that multiple times. I've been like, damn. Like he's probably just chilling. And be like, y'all. MF Doom's probably pretty old head. now. Like that might not even be him doing that yeah. shit. Yeah. You know, like fuck it. But um, going back, playing off where we were at with uh, the end of part one. You guys kind of want to step away from that whole Kids Next Door concept a little bit. Yeah, well, of course our name is still Kids Next Door. We're still a fire name. Um, But we just don't want to be compared to the cartoon as much. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I, I, me personally, I don't, I love the cartoon, but the music is not the same as the cartoon. It's a group of mm -hmm. artists. And then there's the cartoon, which is codenamed Kids Next Door. So it's like, you know, we had people draw us. Like, somebody drew a fan, or, fan art of us the other day, and it was like, you know, us is like the k and I was like, damn, man, I'm not trying to do it. The lawsuit, you bro. Wanna, you feel me? So well, I just got to, yeah, you know. Kind of differentiate from that. Yeah. Um, like You've been adamant, though. So I know you just refer to yourself as a group, but you've been adamant the whole part one about the interview is referring to you guys as a band. Yeah. And you very, like, because I don't feel like, you guys make like one genre or one sound of mm -hmm. music. Like you guys, is there even a way to describe a Kids Next Door sound? Uh, like you think you could? Because you guys I mean, got there's, so many diff there, so much there, different. There's shit. certain songs. See, you, you see, there's certain songs there. You'll you'll know that we're being experimental. You know, there's certain mm -hmm. songs where you'll hear it and you'll be like, all right, this is definitely very new of them. We always make new shit that's like that we've never done before. But some of our shit, you know, if you listen to songs like Nightmare on Melrose. Uh, Cinderella Story, uh, Sold Out Show in London. These songs have switch ups, you know. Mm -hmm. Like this, you know, we 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 bounce off of each other, and the beat, you know, switches up and shit. That's a that's a sound, you know. That's one of Slash's sounds, I should say. But you know, songs like Kate Skates and like Rachel and shit. That's just. I don't know what the fuck to call that. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to call that shit. <laughs> I, I, I I honestly have no idea what to call that. Distorted house trap. Yeah. Doom. Like, I don't know what the fuck to call <laughs> any of shit at this point. I really don't have no, any clue of like genre, you know? Yeah. I, you I'm guys starting just kind of make that. music. Yeah. And I think that's why like I really like you guys because you guys are a perfect example of where we're at like in today's generation. Mm -hmm. Like people are people and artists today are literally just making music. Like exactly. we're not one thing. Like mm -hmm. look at like Brock Hampton, they call himself a boy band. Yeah. They don't sound on like no in sync. Mm -hmm. Or fucking, you know what I mean? No yeah. Backstreet Boys. That's that's why that's why I like, like to. I mean, mm -hmm. and it's not even like I'm forcing it. I I believe I I see us as a band. It's just a new you age know? band. It's something yeah. new. Like you know, it, when, you, when like, you see us play Anti Hero, Apollo's on the drums. I'm on the guitar. You know, I don't know who's gonna be on the bass. Cause <laughs> God doesn't play bass. But uh, <laughs> guys goes to Scott, Fossil guys probably will play. Learn. You know, play the bass. <laughs> I don't care. He can get a mic. He can yeah. sing. You know, like we we really do this shit. We can do this shit. Mm. You know, I can consider us as a band, you know, or a music group or whatever the fuck you want to call us. At this point, I just don't, we don't even know what we are. Yeah. We honestly have no idea what we are. So to backtrack on the timeline of this, Dirty Drops a Dirty Book. Uh, Apollo and Kaka come in the picture. Mm -hmm. So when, Kids Next Door, you said officially kind of gets established April 2018. Yeah, April 2018. <clears throat> so when did K&D Volume 1 kind of start to um, take shape? So I want to say, so in April, w okay, so earlier than April, I would say leading into 2018, you know, around New Year's and shit, I still have old Snapchats of like, you know, me talking about, it's our last year being broke, like, you know, crazy shit. Mm. Talking about K&D, K&D, K&D. And, uh, you know, we, we were making music mad music together you know we were making a lot of group songs but i was making a lot of songs with kaka i was making a lot of songs with apollo apollo was making a lot of songs with dirty you know it was like we were all working together while hopping on slash beats you know what i'm saying mm. and it's it's yeah it was almost like a group 
So we were just like, all right, well, Trap Renaissance is coming up. Why don't we just all get on this show and call ourselves K&D and rock out? And we did it, and it was fucking fun as fuck. And we just kind of... There was an, and, and the craziest part is we didn't really start having real conversations for a while. We kind of just went with it. We were just like, all right, we're doing it. Fuck it. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, later on in the, t- in the picture, we, we, we started to sit down and be like, what, what do we want to do with this group? Like, do we want to take this the whole, like, the whole way and, and, you know, have this be our careers? Or, like, do we just want to keep making music, you know? And so we're at that stage where it's like mm-hmm. we've decided, you know, where we want to go with the music, you know? We always we always are gonna keep it. Um, we're always gonna keep it the sound that everybody wants to hear. You know. The, yeah, it's gonna kind of service your fans at the same time. It's yeah. gonna be experimental. Well, I mean, not 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 so as like, all right, well, people like rap music, so we're gonna make rap songs. Like, we're yeah. just gonna keep making everything we want. You know, because that's what the fans want. We're just gonna keep making random weird shit, and it's gonna go up. Now, what's it like seeing fans? It's uh like how is it to be what 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 moment did you realize like holy shit I have fans like uh definitely definitely Atlanta the the Atlanta Dallas um and these are these are the tour dates by mm-hmm. the way is yeah um Portland Seattle L A of course L A is the biggest one New York um, even Boston and like Jersey and shit like it was crazy you know. Um, Denver, all of these, basically the tour, the tour woke me up to the fact that like my music can change somebody's vibe from like, I don't know, they they could just do a lot for people. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't understand what it could do for people. I just understood what it did for me. And like to, to see that, like, I don't know that I can do that for people and they want to pull up and they want to have a good time and they enjoy the performance. They enjoy the show. Uh, it's, 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 it's surreal sometimes, you know, some people are like, I can't believe I'm fucking meeting you. And it's just like, I did. I, I definitely can. I'm just yeah. a normal fucking person. You just but, still feel like so normal. Mm-hmm. It just, it is what it is. You know, we, we don't even fucking like when we, when we do our shows, we're out in the crowd talking to everybody, you know, we're, we don't sit in the green room and wait for the show to start. Like we're out, conversating with people behind the merch stand selling clothes and shit mm-hmm. you know so what's it you've met so many so many different artists so what was it, what's it like meeting and coming up with a lot of people in charlotte because like like bryce belize mm-hmm. you know nascar like all you guys were like nobody's quote unquote at the mm-hmm. same time and now you guys are really making waves in music industry so what's it like to kind of see that like wow we were all kind of just on the same shows like local shows and just local artists and now you know people signing deals moving mm-hmm. to LA like touring outside of the country it's, like, it's, it's one thing to see it you know what I'm saying it's one thing to see it on your phone it's another thing to really like you know what I'm saying uh, b- like back in November when um NASCAR got uh, Airbnb in the hills. Like it, mm-hmm. to be there with them, and it's just like we're here. You know what I'm saying? We were in Charlotte recording in my laundry room, and now we're like we're in California now. We're in the hills. We're overlook. We're overlooking the whole city. Like it's a whole different vibe. You know? Yeah. And it's not. It's not surprising to me at all. All the people that are succeeding, I knew they were going to. You know? Everybody that's getting some, getting something for themselves, good for them. Because I already I already predicted the shit. I already knew who was going to do what. Now I'm excited to see because I haven't been in Charlotte in a while. Um, you know, I'm excited to see new people popping up mm-hmm. that I have never seen before. Cause like one, Munch. Yeah. Munch is a perfect example of somebody that I met maybe four, three, four months ago that his music sticks with me. Like, if I fuck with, I fuck with Munch mad heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's one of my favorite artists from North Carolina. One thing I have gotten a lot of messages about and that's how I knew you guys really made your mark over here. Is I keep getting mad messages about it, and I still do to this day. The Charlotte scene is dying. You guys need to do something. There mm-hmm. needs to be a new surgeons of artists. And everybody, I keep getting messages, Kids Next Door, Belize, NASCAR, all them, and multiple, multiple people, like 10 cell phones, mm-hmm. who's still in Charlotte for the most part. But, like, you know what I mean? The scene's kind of moving up, mm-hmm. like, on up and out. 
on to better things. So I keep getting a lot of messages like, yo, we need to do something. We need to have mm-hmm. new artists come out. So that's how I kind of knew you guys really, really fucking made your mark and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm getting messages about how these four fucking kids, five kids, sorry, I love you, Slash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> five kids really, like, were, like, the glued to this for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. No, and, and I don't give a fuck what anybody says. If you were at those Oso shows in 2018, 2017, you know who the fuck started this shit. You know who the fuck built this Charlotte wave. There was something already before this. I will give it to Nappy Tribe. Nappy Tribe, they they made their, they were the first group to make a mark in Charlotte. I was listening to Nappy Tribe when I was in high school. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's They made a mark in Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? We came in, we made a mark in Charlotte, you know? And I don't think the scene's dying at all. I think if we were to throw some shit right this second, it if pop. we were to say, bro, there's going to be a show this Saturday, even with this coronavirus shit, I guarantee you people would still pull oh, up. Oh, yeah, bro. people, would, people still, would still pull up. People would be like, fuck it. <laughs> and, and a lot of people would question it, but they'd still pull up. Mm. And uh, I, I, th- I definitely think Charlotte needs something soon because I haven't heard, uh, like, you know, I, there's just so many artists that you're right aren't here anymore um but you know a lot of a lot of times like it's for the best and then you can come back here you know i'll come back here i'll visit but um you know when it comes when it comes down to you know like i said we we took that turn in our careers where we said all right music is what we're doing now for our lives like we're making music and we're doing this together so it's like now we're all out there on our own you know the five of us so I gotta be out there with them, you know. We gotta, we we gotta do this how we did it. That's why I say we gotta never forget where we started. Mm-hmm. We always have to do this shit together, you know. It's all for one. It's all for one. Split the pie down the middle. Fuck it. What what motivates you overall? There's gotta be some sort of underlying motivation that kind of keeps you into this shit because there's like, I I do notice it there. Like I kind of notice what you were saying too, kind of seeing it ahead of time, who's going to go where. It's mm-hmm. kind of pretty clear cut, especially for people like us who have kind of been around it a little more. It's kind of clear cut to see pretty quickly who's cut out for this shit, yeah. who, who's going to make it, who's not. So fucking, what's it like? Man, I kind of just lost my train of thought with that. I'm too stoned for that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, fuck you said it. It's I lost uh, my train of thought. You with said it. you said a lot of artists are more like it's clear cut. Like who 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 I know is gonna blow up or who I predicted is gonna mm. go somewhere with their career. Yeah, I'm too stoned. Nah, there was something good I had with that. Fuck. Gotta stop smoking so much weed. But um, I think I was going with like. Okay, yeah, your motivation. <laughs> it was, it was, it was something motivation yeah, what, what motivates We were me. talking about what mm-hmm. motivates you because kind of see, seeing it like this this isn't really cut out for everybody. Yeah. Like you kind of, that's where I was kind of going with it. This is not cut out for everybody. It's kind of yeah. clear cut to you see. You have to enjoy it. Who is made made out for the shit. But mm-hmm. there's, is there any other underlying motivation besides the fact that this is just simply what you love? Um. Well, see, there, there's always, there's the duality. There's the duality of this whole thing that I'm doing, you know, there's, there's the side where it's like, for me, where it's like, I don't care about the money. I don't care about anything really. I just care about putting out music and being able to be in the studio for 24 hours straight. Mm -hmm. I was in the studio for 24 hours straight the other day, bro. That shit was hectic, but I enjoyed it because I love doing that shit. I enjoy it. That's my motivation. And then my other motivation is like the money, you know, for my mom, for my family, you know, for, for the people, that, so, so that I can, like, help, that's my other motivation, you know, besides the passion of mm-hmm. music. But that's, that's about it. So what's it like being around a lot of, like, artists that, you know what I mean, you were listening to before, and now it's kind of like, who, who have you met that's kind of, like, surprised you? Because I know, you know, you've definitely met some people. Um, well, we met City Morgue. We we actually opened up for City Morgue twice mm-hmm. uh, in L.A. last month, and it was it was crazy to to meet them because they had already knew who we were. You know, they already knew like yeah. You know, they knew people what pay, to expect. They yeah, like bro. they were they were fucking on stage. Zilla was on stage. He front flipped into the crowd during Captain Jack. Like it was it was shocking to me that like yeah, the, a mark has actually been made. Like we're that n- new generation of artists that people don't know mm-hmm. yet they're about to 
be welcomed onto that stage, yeah. that platform. So it was it was it was cool to, to meet City Morgue. Um, Tokyo, you know, Tokyo's Revenge. Yeah, of um, course. But we had already Shouts met him. Tokyo. We'd already met him, met him in uh, Miami. But he's mad humble because, you know, in Miami, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure how big he was, but I, I didn't even, I didn't know him. I didn't even talk to him in Miami. And you know, he came up and he was like, "Yo, like, you know, I know yeah, you guys, kids cool, next dude. door." Like, and it, it, it was, it was humble. I was like, "Damn, like, you just pulled up in a fucking Audi. Like, that's that's mm. that's mad humble of you to do that." Um, but yeah. I, Apollo and Kaka went over to his crib, you know. So, bro's mad cool. Yeah, when I first met Tokyo, he's mad welcoming mm-hmm. too. Like, went up to me, introduced himself, all that shit. Um, shout out to Tokyo. Who else? Just, Josiah. Josiah. Yeah, shout, shout out, out Josiah. Talks to you guys. Um, shout out Josiah. He's cool. Who the fuck? Who who else is cool? That uh, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> most of my friends, most of my friends that I hang out with, are, you know, the people that are at the house all the time. Um. He's not. He, he's he's about as big as we are right now, but he's gonna be a fucking superstar one day. He's gonna be one of the biggest artists to ever live. Shout out Oddly Shrugs. That's my new favorite. I fucking yeah. love Oddly. Oh, and um, I mean, I, I've I've known Darky. I've known Darky for yeah. probably almost a year now. But it is really really good living in California because I get to hang out with Darky and Spider Gang and Brome and Corpse and Cubensis and all of them all the fucking time. So. Shouts out to Spider Gang. I fucking love them. They're the only other group that I can vouch for right now that are doing their own fucking thing. Original, yeah. like original. Everything that I see from Darky, from from Wendigo, from like anybody in Spider Gang, it's like shit is un- like untoppable, bro. Yeah, Spider it's Gang's impressive, man. Crazy. I fucking love them, bro, because they they. Man, Willie's going nuts over here. Yeah, Willie is losing his shit. Shut the fuck up. Hey, Willie. He's going. <laughs> that man is off. <laughs> yeah, for real, he's off. Right Spider Gang's going. Spider Gang's going. It's just mm-hmm. crazy to to see, and it's like from my tour, position. Tour coming soon. Another tour, kid, a Kids Next Door headlining tour. Uh, Kids Next Door Spider Gang. Okay. We haven't planned it at all, but it's gonna happen because that's what needs to happen for the culture. It needs to happen. There needs to be a K and D Spider Gang. Yeah, that would be wild. Cause Kids Next Door. Willie, <laughs> god damn, they're going crazy. Come here. Fucking, but it's like Spider Game's going nuts. They got so many up and coming art. Like Little Darky's gonna be a legend. Mm-hmm. Like he's already made a huge mark on the industry. Like bro, you got blacklisted from. I'm not even gonna say. It. I don't think I could say. It. I don't know. I'm not gonna put his business out there. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. ain't put it out there. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say it. But like, they got Little Darky. They got. Wendigo is good mm-hmm. to be an insane. My, he's my, he's, like, Wendigo's my favorite producer in the game. Like, Wendigo's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Christ Dillinger's amazing. Brahmane, Cubensis. Mm-hmm. Like, Cubensis and Wendigo essentially, like, shaped a whole fucking sound. Yeah, Sosa. Let's not forget. Yeah, Sosa. Let's not yeah. forget Flacco, Edison. Oh, yeah. Like, fucking. Bro, Fla- Flacco and Eddie. Flacco and Eddie are, like, dear friends. Flacco and Eddie are, like, brothers to me. Mm. My little siblings. I love them to death. They're going, like, Flacco and Eddie... They they continue to amaze me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying they continue to amaze me, always. They and they always will. They always will. I actually have to. I actually, when I get back to LA, I have to see Eddie because he's in he's in LA for like another week. Mm. I have to see him. It's been too long. It's been since like September. So shit. What's your next hair color? I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about shaving my head. Shaving it? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I just seen NASCAR. Didn't NASCAR just shave his shit? Yeah, something? he just like he cut he cut all the spikes off and then like just took a razor and went crazy. But I'm mm. thinking of like like going like like a buzz cut and then dyeing it a color or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Shit. At this point, I just don't know. Anything else you want to throw in there before we wrap this up? Um, I had something to say. Um, hey Willie, come here, bud. Come here. Shout out pharmacy. Uh, shout out. Who hey. the fuck else do I need to shout out? Come here. If I'm forgetting anybody, let me know. Shout out Fossil, Miyagi, Silas, um, NASCAR, Koa, uh, Ant, Nando, Naeem, Ken, Parker. Vuai, Tommy, uh, <laughs> uh, my mom, bro, my fucking mom. Shout out my fucking mom. Shout out everybody. And of course, Word. 
Shout out to uh, Colt Classic. Shout out to Bobby D. Thank you. Shout out Appreciate Ben with the lens. Yeah, you know man, it's been it's been great. It's like from my position, bro. It's really been an honor to be able to do what what I can do and everything. That last part was probably th the biggest cringe compilation ever, <laughs> but I'm gonna allow it because it's one day it's gonna be legendary. Fuck it, and fuck it. But like from my position, just to get to talk to you guys and get the interview, like I did so many first interviews. It's just like I did your first mm -hmm. one on one interview, kid, bro. If you be, th thinking about it before I was on the way here, it's been over a year since we did that kids next door interview. Yeah, yeah. That first kid. You next go door and watch interview. it, bro. It's, yeah, bro. It it's still gets so mad funny, views. Bro. Like yeah. people still, oh, bro, to watch the whole thing. Like the room just looks so hectic. Mm -hmm. Like the camera quality's not focused in all the way. The audio is trash. The camera cuts. No, like just to see. I, I was saying we, we need to do another <laughs> no, one. No, we're going to. We need to do another one in a clean ass room and in like a whole different setting. And hey, Willie! Whole, like... Yo, we're about to wrap this up anyway, bro. But Yo, we... literally, I'm talking about. Hold on, hold on. Is the camera on? Yeah. I was just speaking of the devil. Oh, boy, Eddie. Hey, let me call you back in literally two seconds. What's up, bro? Oh, all right, all right, I got you, man. Yeah, we'll wrap this up right now. Love you, too. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Fucking Willie's been going nuts over here on camera. He's got a lot of energy right yeah, now. Yeah, so Willie's teed up. thank you for fucking tuning in. Um, this is called Classic Interview number 29. Hey, Mazzy with the push start. Um, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Instagram at KULT Classic Official. Follow us on TikTok at KULT Classic Official. And hit us on Twitter because Twitter's a hoe. They won't let us put the whole handle. It's at KULT Classic OFF. And then go to our website. Copy yourself something. Get it, we're going to re up on Logo T soon. Get yourself a sweatshirt, t shirt, all that shit. KULT Classic Official.com. Support the brand. The more you support us, the more we can do for you. We got shows. And be sure to watch out for my. I know you couldn't hear me, but I said. Coming up soon. Oh, 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 hold up, hold up. Uh, go buy a K&D t-shirt off of deathproofinc.com. Oh, go do that. Yeah, go do that. We just we just released uh, new K&D t-shirts. Or uh, go go find us on Instagram at K&D Kids Next Door. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Mozzie with a push start. Um, for real, go get those shirts, bro, so we can fucking eat. And I don't have to live off EBT, bro. I'm yeah, tired of this Mozzie. shit. Feed Mozzie, bro. Feed me! <laughs> Feed me! Oh, shit. Feed me! I'm tired of being hungry, man. That shit's bullshit. Woo! Well, shit. Fucking. How much? We got five minutes on that. You want to wrap it up, or you got any advice for any upcoming artists? Uh, Stay original. Uh, Make sure your music's loud. Make sure people can hear it. Make sure that you're not afraid to, like, let your whole entire voice out and be loud and like be like affirmative and upfront. Cause I feel like some people are like hiding mm. and like, you got to like, you know what I'm saying? At the mic, like let it yeah. out. That's the only like recording tip I have. Other than that, bro, just fucking be yourself when it comes to life and like taking care of what you need to take care of to get to the point where you're a solidified artist. Cause I'm not even quite there. All I've done is just whatever I wanted to do. So, Maybe that's the key. Do whatever the fuck you want. And again, like, thank you guys for tuning in. And as I was saying before, uh, we got distracted. It's just been a blessing for my position to fucking be able to interview so many people for the first time, to be able to do your first interview. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been, like, the first Kids Next Door interview was sloppy as it was, and I know we're going to do another one. It's still kind of historic. You know what I mean? Fucking Belize's first on-camera interview. Uh, Lil Darky's first interview. Just so much shit that I was able to do it i'm just blessed thank you guys for watching fucking keep subscribing keep sharing thank you guys for all the messages and all that shit all the support fucking keep supporting people like kids next door keep supporting all these smaller up-and-coming artists because this is the next wave this is the next generation and these guys are truly making a mark on the, and we're cringe on compilations planet. and industry plants and we were <laughs> we were put here to take over tiktok and make little kids dance to our songs that's the only reason why we're in the industry. We're fruits off of the tree that didn't weren't supposed to be picked. We're crab apples. <laughs> <laughs> and they were born with names like Mossy with a push start. And yeah. A name and Dirty Butt. Who and, names and, a child Dirty Butt? Uh, Oswald. <laughs> shout out Oswald Sukumika Habwe. Um, shout out Taylan Gomez. 
Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's all I got, man. That's all I got. Bro, shout outs to shout outs to Bojangles, bro. Yeah. Oh fuck, I gotta go get some Bojangles. I still haven't done that. I haven't had Bojangles in months. You wanna go get Bojangles? Fuck yeah. Let's go get Bojangles. We're getting Bojangles right now, Bojangles. Man. Yeah. Thank you guys. Get Bojangles. Let's do it. Thank you.